Hey, what's up, everybody? So my last fan film review slash reaction did much better than I thought it was going to, and there was a lot of very positive feedback, so thank you for that. I read almost all of your guys' comments, and there were a lot, almost like 1,600, 1,700, something crazy like that. And the number one thing you guys recommended was the Sisters of House Black. It was made by a channel called Kelsey Ellison. I've never seen this fan film, but you guys hyped it up, so I have pretty high expectations. Like last time, I'm not just going to watch the whole thing, I'm going to cut it up, react to certain parts, give my opinions on things, point out easter eggs, and I'll even add some of my film school mumbo jumbo, talking about certain shots, the writing structures, and anything else I see. Then at the end, I'll give my final thoughts and my rating out of 10. Judging by how many of you recommended this, I'm sure most of you have seen it already, but if you haven't, I have it linked down below. So now, let's get into it. October 31st, 1981. That's the day that Voldemort tried to kill Harry and killed Lily and James. Is that the Potters? They did a great job recreating the Black family tree. It looks just like it was in the movies. Oh, a pensive. We're diving into some memories, I see. Nice. Seven muggles have been reported to have mysteriously gone missing, having been grabbed by a group in black cloaks. Okay, that's an interesting plot point to start the film. It definitely drew me in. <laughs> I'm sorry, that hair looks so fake. Is that supposed to be Lucius? And that must be Narcissa with him, because she was the only one with blonde hair out of the three black sisters. Where are the teachers? Oh! That's some solid special effects right there, too. You watching, Mudbloods? <laughs> oh, just throwing out racial slurs so casually. All right. Shut it, Lestrange. Lestrange. So is that Rodolphus or Rebastian? They're the two Lestrange brothers. It means we have a bond like no other. I'm assuming those are the three black sisters. Give them back now! <laughs> I'm sorry. I know that's not supposed to be funny, but his acting. I know he's trying, but wow. <laughs> that's funny to me. What about all those newts I worked so hard for? Did she say newts? So I once said newts in one of my videos and I got absolutely roasted. People saying I wasn't a real Harry Potter fan. So apparently it's pronounced N-E-W-T's or O-W-L's. It's not owls. But now I'm wondering which one is right. I guess it doesn't really matter. You know that muggles are causing wars and destruction in this world. Their weak-minded blood does not belong with ours. I will marry a pure blood. Okay, so seeing the Black Sisters' parents pressure them into marrying purebloods is really spot on. Because to the Black family, that was more important than anything. More important than doing well in school, more important than their careers. Being pureblood is everything to the family. Don't no, be that. silly, Belt. Andromeda. Oh, I guess you could tell who the favorite is. It makes sense though, because Andromeda is eventually banished from the family. I like to see this so early on because it shows that the filmmakers really understand the dynamic between the Black Sisters, the Black family, and most of all, Andromeda. There is a very easy way to fix this. Tignus, she's forgotten enough as it is. You are a disgrace to our family. Oh, <laughs> maybe Bellatrix isn't the favorite. So they erased her memories at some point? Okay, interesting. I'll, I want to see where they go with that. Our family is the noble and most ancient house of black. You will all contribute to carrying on a pure magical bloodline. See, now that's a great line because that one line delivers all of the information that I just gave on the black family's priorities. That's a good bit of writing because they incorporate a lot of information in a small amount of time, leaving more room for other things in the film. I've got to say, the costumes that we've seen so far are absolutely incredible. A big round of applause to the costume designers. Oh, so she's been getting her memory wiped, but she planned ahead and extracted those memories so she could still have them? Interesting, interesting. Just casually practicing the killing curse, no big deal. Just a small moment, but they perfectly plucked that line from the movies. Ted. Ted Tonks. I like the early development between Ted and Andromeda because we know they eventually get married. It's also quite accurate that she tries to hide these feelings from her sisters who have a totally different outlook. Adding this actually adds a sort of sad side to Andromeda's character because she wants to fit in with her sisters so much, but her beliefs are just so different. So far, they've done a great job understanding these characters and using the very little information that we had from the books to turn it into very interesting and compelling scenes that still stick to the canon. That's not easy to do. He's worse than Malfoy. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I love the way Narcissa is like, yo, I know you're not talking about my man like that. He said he'd take us to visit the Dark Lord tonight. You two coming? Of course. If there's new magic being taught, I want to be there. I'll go get my cloak. I find it interesting that Andromeda is so eager to see the Dark Lord. Meanwhile, Narcissa is sort of the hesitant one. I feel like that's out of character for both of them, as they should be the opposite. Narcissa should be the one that wants to go, and Andromeda should be the one that's hesitant. Oh, are they gonna show him? Huh. Interesting casting choice for Voldemort. I, I like it, actually. Pure. I love the chemistry that Bellatrix and Voldemort immediately have, and I love the way that she looks at him in like this admiring way, because we know that she would later go on to be completely and absolutely loyal to him. Duel with me, Bellatrix Black. Well, damn, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> he barely lifted a finger. Oh, here we go, here we go. <laughs> what the heck? It looked like he just used the force. Wrong franchise, guys. No, I'm joking. He probably did a non-verbal summoning spell, but that was just funny to me. It looked really cheesy. You show much potential. I like this sort of defining moment for Bellatrix and Voldemort's eyes. That was a nice touch. Let me teach you. Okay, so this is where she becomes a Death Eater? Hmm. See, I'm not much a fan of how Andromeda was so excited to go see the Dark Lord, but then when she's there, she's the complete opposite, and, well, sort of the way she should have been from the start. But either way, I can't see Andromeda agreeing to go see the Dark Lord the way she did here. And if she did, I wish they would have shown her to be a bit hesitant, rather than just like, heck yeah, let's go. The view on Muggle Relations is dividing the Wizarding World for the first time since Grindelwald. I like the mention of Grindelwald. That was a nice little Easter egg. The group in black cloaks have identified themselves as Death Eaters. They have claimed responsibility for multiple attacks. Oh, nice. So now we're getting to the point of the first Wizarding War, and Voldemort is now allowing his army to go public. I think they've done a good job with the timeline of the film. It was a bit choppy at parts, but overall, I think they've executed the timeline better than I ever would have thought they would. You could join us. Lucy is asking Narcissa to join the Death Eaters is interesting because, as we know, Narcissa never officially joins the Death Eaters, but she supports them heavily with her older sister and her husband being part of the army. The Weird Sisters. I love it. That's a great Easter egg. So the Weird Sisters are a wizarding band, and they actually played at the Yule Ball in Harry's fourth year. Besides, the Dark Lord will protect us. So will I. Now this is something I love to see. So the last time we saw Bellatrix with her parents, she was being yelled at and ordered around. But now we see how much she's transformed over the years, now being part of Voldemort's army. And now she's calling the shots. So wait, hang on. Let me go back a bit. Yes, yeah, so in the last scene, we see that Mr. Black, what's his name? I think Cygnus Black. I hope that's right. But anyway, Cygnus Black is looking down at Bellatrix. He has the higher ground because he's in command. Then if we go to the scene later on, Bellatrix now has the higher ground, and she's the one looking down at her father and the rest of her family because now she's in command. That's a clever bit of filmmaking and a classic use of camera angles to convey dominance. It truly is a shame that too many ministry officials come by our manor, but if you were to offer your house, it would prove your alliance to him I'm sorry, I'm just not a fan of the casting for Lucius. He's supposed to be in command and in charge when he enters a room, but here he's just soft-spoken and doesn't really come off as the cocky and arrogant Lucius Malfoy that we know. Also, I don't think the wig is helping. I'm sure this kid is a great actor, I mean no disrespect, but this just wasn't the role for him. He can keep us safe. See, now even Narcissa has a more commanding presence than Lucius. I actually love to see this because it really shows Narcissa's transformation. I just wish they got an actor for Lucius that could match her level of dominance. I will give permission to this on one condition. You will marry. There are other ways to gain the Dark Lord's approval. How does... The strange sound. Okay, so I have to comment on this because this is fantastic. So in the canon of the seven books, Bellatrix married Rodolphus, but she never loved him, her heart always going for Voldemort. So to add this scene where Bellatrix only agrees to marry Rodolphus to impress Voldemort is such a great addition. It adds a whole new dynamic to her love for Voldemort. Everything that she does, even marrying someone, is all for him. Bravo to the writers for that. Lucius said it's charm to play when it senses love. Wow, that is the most Bellatrix wedding dress I've ever seen. The costume designers nailed it. Oh, there's the dark mark. 
I'm honestly really enjoying the bond that these sisters have. It's something that was never really addressed in the series, so adding something like this that isn't technically canon was risky, but I really like what they're doing here. I'm not a fan of these quick movements and like the whoosh sound effects. It's a cool concept to have it all be filmed in one shot, but they just didn't do it in a way that enhances the film. It doesn't hurt the film per se, but it definitely doesn't add to it. And when that's the case, you should just leave it out. Serious? This is incredible. How did you get it to track people? Serious in the Marauder's map. I love it. Actually, I was going to ask if you could help me with the Slytherin clue. Oh, that's something I never thought about. How the Marauders knew what the Slytherin, Hufflepuff, and Ravenclaw common rooms looks like. That's a great little addition. You know you're going to need some sort of concealment charm though if you don't want anyone stealing it. Actually, she's right. There's one that I use on my letters. The Lacoris charm. Wow, okay. So some of the ideas for the Marauders map came from Andromeda. I can get down with that. You can really tell that these filmmakers and writers were having fun with the script. I always love when fan films add something that wasn't established in the canon, but adds a lot to the story. Seeing Sirius and Bellatrix interact knowing what happens in the future is sort of ominous. No thanks. Hold up. Is that Vagard in that picture? I think it is. That's outstanding. If you don't know Vagard, he has a YouTube channel. He does a lot of Harry Potter stuff. If you don't already know him, go check him out. Tell him I sent you. See, now I'm second guessing myself. If that isn't Vagard, that's gonna be pretty embarrassing. Either way, check his channel out. Come along, Sirius. I want you to talk to the Caro girl. The Caro girl, wow. That's one of the siblings who took over at Hogwarts when Snape was made headmaster. That's a nice addition. She's probably not a Death Eater yet, but she eventually would become one. Attacking a Muggle Parliament building. Wow. This camera work is horrendous. It's been pretty good up until this point, but it's really bad here. Oh, so this is the scene that we saw at the beginning of the film. Wow, my dumbass really said that was the Potter's house. I thought it was Voldemort because of the date. We can't keep on living like this. See, now this is more of the Andromeda that I expected, wanting to cut ties with their pureblood family. However, I don't know if Narcissa's allegiance was wavering yet. Later on, yes for sure, but that was only when Lucius was cast down by Voldemort after Book 5. But at this point in time, I feel like she would stand beside Lucius and Bellatrix. Especially Lucius, because if Voldemort found out what she did, that would screw Lucius over. And knowing Voldemort, that might mean the end for both of them. Let's see how it plays out though. I want to give them the benefit of the doubt. Oh, she's pissed. Wow, Bellatrix's transformation is phenomenal in this film. Stop being so selfish! Wow, she sounded just like Helena Bonham Carter there. You disgust me. I've been doing a magnificent. I have power you will never reach. Okay, so now we see the ultimate fate of these sisters. Bellatrix the extremist on one side, then Andromeda on the opposite end on the other side, and then Narcissa in the middle. That's great writing. Boy, this is a death eater! That slap. Wow, that was not well done. You're mad. <laughs> now that right there is Bellatrix. I love it. This actress is incredible. I've got to give her props. They struggle a bit with the physical stuff. They're just they're just moving so slowly when they do it. That's exactly what they do. This reminds me of when Bellatrix held Hermione at knife point. And just like Ted Tonks, she was a muggle-born too. We're engaged. And that is where she lost Narcissa's trust. I like that. I liked that the thing that made Andromeda turn on her was Andromeda tainting the Black family. Damn, bro, don't stop and watch. Get your wand. Help him. <laughs> that Crucio effect is interesting. I wouldn't have added it myself, but I see what they were going for. I feel like it's sort of unnecessary. Like, not even the films added that. But whatever. It, I see what they were going for. Oh! Damn! Oh, see, now Bellatrix licking her arm is a great nod to the first time we ever saw her in the films. She was licking the dark mark. I like that little Easter egg. Oh. Okay, so what I said earlier about Narcissa being out of character and being too much against the Death Eaters, I take it back. I now see that they were showing how she chose her loyalties in a more poetic and meaningful way. Her shooting Ted down has so much more meaning because that is how she chose her allegiance. That's some dynamic writing right there. I'm impressed. <laughs> wow. I can't say enough about this actress. She's incredible. Definitely the best actor in the entire film. No. 
Oh, I thought she killed him. Well, she finally mastered the killing curse. This camera work isn't the best. The action scenes are probably the weakest part of this film. The way they're aligned in this fight scene is great symbolism, again showing how Bellatrix is on one side, Andromeda is on the other, and then we see Narcissa who's in the middle. You will never see her again. <laughs> so Andromeda is officially banished from the family just like she was in the books. She's now free to have a happy life and marry Ted Tonks. Well, happy until he dies, and her daughter dies, and she's left to raise her grandson. Wow, she does not have a happy ending. Whoa, that's one of the best effects in this whole movie. I'm very impressed with that. They were your memories. Oh, plot twist. The Dark Lord is gone. He was killed by a boy. <laughs> Shots fired. I mean, yeah, he was killed by a baby. I never really thought about that. Like, that's embarrassing. Sissy! What does that say? My dyslexic ass cannot read upside down. Hold up. Oh. Alice Longbottom. Okay, okay. Oh, wow. So the piano only plays when it senses love. That's genius. This shows that Bellatrix truly is in love with Voldemort. See, that's something I never really thought of. Like, sure, we know that Bellatrix was obsessed with bringing the Dark Lord back, but I never thought about it from her point of view. She lost the man that she was in love with. That's tragic. It really makes you think about Bellatrix in a whole new light. That's a great bit of writing right there. And now she's on her way to go after the Longbottoms. That's a great ending. Okay, so that was actually a really well done film. I think the camera work was lacking a bit, which I mentioned a few times in the video. The action also lacks suspense because if we're being honest, the actors just weren't good at doing stunts. And this led to some of the scenes turning out to be a bit comical. But this film's main strength was definitely the writing and understanding these characters. They really understood deeper meanings, what drove the characters, and how they would react in certain situations. This was especially true for the three black sisters. Things like Bellatrix's love for Voldemort, how Narcissa was teetering between her two sisters struggling to pick a side, and even just the three sisters' transformations over the course of the film. I think Andromeda was a bit too far to the dark side to start. I would have loved to see her be more in the middle ground, but again, they gave that middle ground part to Narcissa, which was a writing choice that they clearly made from day one. Some of the acting was a bit rough, but overall they did a great job, especially the actress that played Bellatrix. She was phenomenal. All in all, I was impressed. Now for my rating out of 10. I gave the last film an 8 out of 10, and to me, I think that film was far superior. If I was basing this solely on technical and physical aspects like the spotty camera work and sort of hilarious action scenes, I would probably give this film a 5.5 out of 10. But because the writing and the understanding of these characters was so great, I'm going to bump that up to a 6.5 out of 10. A big round of applause to the cast and crew that made this film. I really enjoyed it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Comment below what fan film I should do next. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much for watching, guys. You can follow me on social media to see more of my personal life and more of this little dude. If you like this video, hit that like button and subscribe. I want to give a huge shout out to all my patrons listed below. If you want to be featured on the next video, plus get a bunch of other rewards, become a patron today. Again, thank you so much for watching and look out for more great Movie Flame videos on the way.